session we'll discuss about pin configuration of 8086 microprocessor. As we have seen what is a processor and uh, how it is going to process the inputs and how can it produce the outputs. Okay, now let us see the pin configuration. What is the need of going with pin configuration? If you know the functionality or importance of the pins, then only we can connect the external peripherals like input output devices and some memory devices to the processor or to any of the device. Okay, so that is why initially we learn the pin configuration of the AGC processor to know the importance of each and every pin. Okay, now let us see. So 8086 can be operated in two modes, those are minimum mode and a maximum mode. Now what is a minimum mode? So if one processor along with memory and input output devices are connected to the system bus, then that mode is called as minimum mode. As we are using only one mode, so it is called as a minimum mode. So single processor mode can also be known as a minimum mode. And when it comes to maximum mode, multiple processors, it means more than one processor along with memory and input output devices are connected to the system bus. So it is also called as a multiprocessor mode. Okay. Now let us see the pin structure of a 8086 processor. As you can see here, uh, it is represented in two forms. One is to show the minimum mode signals and the other one is to show the maximum mode signals. Okay. Now it totally contains 40 pins as you can see from 1 to 40. Now out of these 40 pins, some pins would be common in minimum as well as in the maximum mode. It means uh, they provide same functionality in minimum as well as in the maximum mode. But when it comes to some other pins, like as you can see, for one pin there are two names. They are addressed with two names. So these pins will have a separate functionality in minimum as well as the ma uh, maximum mode. Okay. Now here 1 to 23 and from 32 to 40. Now these pins are considered as common signals or common pins. But when it comes to the pins 31 down to 24, now these pins will provide a separate functionality according to their modes. Okay. Now, as you can see, 32, sorry, 31 uh, will be acting as request and uh, grant pins in case of maximum mode. But the same pin will be used as a hold pin in case of minimum mode. So we'll see the functionality or importance of each and every pin. Okay. <coughs> now here. Initially, we'll start with AD02, AD15. So, AD02, AD15, these lines or these pins are called as multiplex lines. Okay. So, if any line is carrying multiple information, multiple form of information, then that particular line is called as multiplex line. Now, as AD0 to AD15 are capable of carrying two forms of information or two forms of uh, data. So that is why uh, these lines are called as multiplex lines. Okay. Now here A represents address and D represents data. So here a uh, total of 16 multiplex lines are present here. So these lines will be carrying address as well as data. Okay. Now whenever the ALE there is one pin. Now if this ALE pin is zero, then it indicates that these lines are carrying uh, data information. If this pin is one then it means that it is carrying the address information okay now whenever the processor wants to communicate with any of the device so initially it would send the address of that particular device during t1 state of the clock cycle okay uh, clock cycle totally or clock totally contains clock signal totally contains uh, four states and uh, without including the wait state okay so if you include the wait state then uh, it would be more than four states Okay, so during the first state, which is called as T1, during that state, processor would be sending the address by using these multiplexer lines. And during T2 state, now these multiplexer lines will be uh, will be in a high impedance state. Why? Because they are in a process to change from address to the data lines. Okay, and during the T3 and T4, as well as in the TW state, now the data will be transferred with the help of uh, these multiplexed lines. Okay, so they'll be carrying the address during T1 state and they'll be carrying the data during T3, TW and T4 states. Okay, now let us see the remaining pins that is remaining address pins that is from A16 to A19. Now these pins are again called as multiplex lines. Why? Because they are capable of carrying the address information. At the same time, they can also carry the status information. 
okay so here they'll be carrying uh, some address bits that is from a16 to a19 so here a total of 20 address lines are present that is from a0 to a15 and then a16 to a19 so there are totally 20 address lines are present so as it is having 20 address lines now it can address up to 1 mb of memory which is nothing but 2 power 20 okay now it has 16 data lines as you can see d0 to d15 so it has totally 16 data lines okay now here <coughs> they'll carry the address and uh, the other functionality is they will provide the status information now what kind of status that they are going to provide now here s3 and s4 these are the two pins which will represent uh, the the which will represent uh, which segment that the processor is currently accessing as you know that there are totally four segments core segment data segment extra segment and then stack segment so these two pins will be representing which segment that the processor is currently accessing okay as you can see as there are two bits so we'll get four combination if these two bits are zero zero or if these two pins are zero zero then it means that processor is accessing extra segment if it is 0, 1, then it indicates that it is accessing stack segment. If it is 1, 0, it means either it is accessing the core segment or else it would be in a idle state. Okay. And if it is 1, 1, then it means that it is accessing the data segment. Okay. And when it comes to S5, now this signal or this pin is going to represent the status of the interrupt flag. Okay. And S6, this is uh, this is uh, reserved for the future purpose and uh, this will be remain or this remains uh, at logic 0 during all the times okay now we have rd bar now it is an active open as you know that this pin active opens are activated uh, when logic 0 is given and active high pins are activated when logic 1 is given okay now as this is the active low pin which is used by microprocessor and when this particular pin becomes zero then it indicates that processor is performing a read operation with respect to a memory or as a input output device okay and uh, the next pin that we have is ready now it is an active high pin and this pin is used by the external peripherals okay so when they are when the external peripheral is communicating with this uh, microprocessor then they'll use this particular pin to represent their status whether they are ready to accept the next data or whether they are ready to transmit the next data or not so that will that will be uh, that will be intimated to the processor with the help of this particular pin now as soon as the now when this pin becomes one then it indicates the processor that now they are not in a stage to accept or transmit the data okay now if this pin is zero sorry if this pin is zero then it means that they are not ready to accept the data and if this pin is 1 then it means that they are ready to accept the data okay and then we have INTR pin now this is the pin through which interrupts are generated those are called as maskable interrupts so maskable interrupts are those interrupts which are user controllable in the sense user can control those interrupts it means we can enable or disable the interrupts which are coming through this INTR pin okay if those interrupts are enabled if maskable interrupts are enabled then if we generate any interrupt through this INTR then the processor is going to recognize those interrupts and provide service to that particular interrupted device if maskable interrupts are disabled then if even even if we generate an interrupt through INTR then processor will not recognize those interrupts and it will continue its other operation or its main program operation okay and uh, these interrupts are enabled or disabled with the help of one flag that is called as interrupt flag now uh, this flag is present inside the flag register so when you make it to one or when you program it to one then it means you have enabled the interrupts okay if if it is programmer to zero it means they are disabled now we have one more pin that is test bar so now this pin is used along with wait instruction so whenever wait instruction is executed then the processor will monitor this test bar pin continuously okay now if this test bar pin uh, is one then processor remains in idle state now if this test bar pin goes low then it will continue the execution okay so when wait instruction is executed as we know that processor will be uh, in a wait state or in a or in a idle state now it is going to continue that idle state as long as this particular pin is high now as soon as this pin becomes low 
then it will come out of the wait state and it will continue the execution or it will resume the execution part. Now we have NMI pin which is called as non-maskable interrupt pin. Now this pin is again used for generating the interrupts but this time it is non-maskable interrupts. As you know what are maskable interrupts? Now here non-maskable in the sense they cannot be controlled by the user. It means they cannot be disabled or, or enabled by the user. Okay. So if any interrupt is generated through this pin then uh, the processor must and should respond to that particular interrupted device. Okay. So that is what NMI pin and when NMI is activated it means if you are giving a logic high pulse on this pin then the processor is going to recognize or identify that particular signal as an interrupt okay and uh, it will be vectored or the control will be vectored or the control will be transferred to this vector to interrupt service routine okay now we have a reset pin so as it is an active high pin so whenever we give a logic high on this particular pin then the processor enters into reset state so what happens when the processor enters into the reset state? Then all the internal registers of the processor will be uh, will be initialized to a defined or to a specific value or to a predefined value. Okay, and we have a clock pin through which we are going to give the clock signal. And what happens uh, with the clock signal? Now all the internal components or internal blocks of the processor get synchronized with the help of this clock signal. Okay, if there is no clock signal, then there would be no synchronization between the processor and the other components or other blocks. And we have a supply, supply pin VCC, and the maximum voltage that we can give here is 5 volts. Okay, and we have ground, as we know, what is the use of ground? So it is used for directing the larger currents to the ground. Okay, and uh, we have one more pin that is MN by NX bar. Now, this pin is used for selecting. The minimum mode or else the maximum mode. Now, if this particular pin is uh, connected to VCC or if this is programmed with one, then it means that we are operating the processor in minimum mode. Now, if it is connected to ground, it means that we are operating the processor in maximum mode. Okay, and we have BHE bar and uh, S7. Now, here BHE bar is nothing but bus high enable. Now, this signal is used along with A0 pin. Okay, now here. Uh, these two pins are going to represent what type of data that the processor is presently accessing. Okay, as you can see, uh, if these two pins are 0, 0, it means now the processor is accessing whole word or a word data. Now, what do you mean by word data? It is, it is nothing but 16 bit data. Okay, if it is 0, 1, then it indicates that it is accessing only the upper byte and those upper bytes are stored inside the OR bank. So, it is accessing the upper byte from the OR bank. And 1, 0 instance, lower byte. And these are stored inside the even bank, which is not shown here, but it is a even bank. Okay. And the one one now here, uh, it is not going to access any kind of data from any of these banks. Okay. It means now these data lines are not carrying the uh, data information. Now, if this uh, MN or MN by MX bar is programmed to one, which is nothing but we are directly connecting it to five volts. So what happens? Now it will enter into the maximum sorry minimum mode. Okay, now here inside this we have M by IO bar. Mm, this is one of the pin uh, which will be acting in minimum mode. Okay, so here M by IO bar. Now, if this pin is programmed to zero, it means that now the processor is doing uh, some operation with input output device. Now, if it is programmed to one, then it means that now the processor is performing some kind of operation with the memory device. And we have INTA bar. Now it is an interrupt acknowledgement signal. Now, uh, when when an interrupt is generated through INT INTR pin, now the processor, if the processor recognizes those interrupts, then it will send the acknowledgement with the help of this pin. Okay. So as it is an active low pin, it will send the logic zero for that particular interrupted device. Now we have ALE. Now this particular pin is used for differentiating the address from uh, data. Uh, on the multiplex lines okay so if this pin is one then it means that uh, the multiplex lines are now carrying address information now if this pin is zero then it means that uh, the multiplex lines are carrying now data information and we have dt by r bar now if this particular pin is one then it means that now the processor is transmitting the data if this is zero then it means that processor is receiving the data from the external world okay and d in bar 
uh, which is nothing but data bus enable and uh, it is an active low pin. Now this pin is activated uh, to activate all the buffers, all the data buffers inside the processor. Okay, and it also indicates a valid data on the multiplex lines. And we have hold pin, hold and hold acknowledgement. Now hold, when this hold pin is used, if there are more number of masters which are connected to the system bus, assuming that DMA controller is connected to the system bus. Now, if that particular master, if other master wants uh, to access the system bus, then it is going to request the original master the, or the processor with the help of this hold pin. So, assuming that the other master is DMA controller, so if the DMA controller wants to use the system bus, wants to access the system bus, then it will send a request to the processor by using this hold pin. Okay, now after recognizing that request, now the processor will be sending the acknowledgement with the help of this hold acknowledgement pin. Okay, now these are what the pins uh, inside the minimum mode. Now let us see the pins which comes under the maximum mode. Okay. So, in order to operate processor in maximum mode, we should connect this particular pin to that is mn by ns bar to ground. Okay. Now, as you can see, uh, inside this uh, maximum mode, we have three bits or three pins like S0 bar, S1 bar, and S2 bar. Now, these are the three pins which are going to indicate or they are called as a status lines. They will be representing the uh, type of operation that is carried out by the processor. So, what kind of operation that the processor is currently carrying out. Now that is indicated by using these pins. Okay, as uh, we have three pins, so there would be a total of eight combinations as you can see 0, 0, 0, which is nothing but interrupt technology. If the processor is acknowledging the interrupt, if it wants to acknowledge the interrupt, then these three pins would become 0. Okay, 0, 0, 1, which is nothing but it is performing the uh, input output read operation. Okay. And 0, 1, 0, which is nothing but it is performing input output write operation. And 0, double 1, it means halt state. So it is not doing anything. Processor would be in a halt state. Okay. When the halt instruction is executed, so it enters into the halt state. And uh, 1, double 0, it is fetching the op code. Okay. And 1, 0, 1, which is nothing but memory read. So it is reading uh, data from the memory device. And 1, 1, 0, memory write. So it means it is writing the data to the memory device and triple one uh, this combination indicates that it is a passive state which is nothing but an idle state. Now we have a, a request and grant pins these are called as request and grant pins that is R1 bar and uh, R0 bar or GT1 bar and GT0 bar. Now in case of maximum mode if uh, multiple processors are connected now if the, if the other processor wants to access the system bus then it is going to request uh, the processor which is currently using the system bus with the help of these pins and these are bidirectional pins so whenever the whenever the other processor sends the request to the currently uh, current processor which is using which is using the system bus then uh, uh, that processor would be sending the acknowledgement signal to the requested processor with the help of the same pin okay and here we have one more uh, pin that is log bar. Now, uh, whenever the log instruction is executed, then uh, then the system bus will be locked. It means if the processor wants to prevent the other masters to access the bus for a duration of uh, for a, for a duration, then uh, then it is going to execute the lock instruction. So, which is going to lock the system bus until this instruction is executed. Okay, and QS1 and QS0, these are the two pins which are going to represent the status of the instruction byte Q. Okay, so if these bits are 0, 0, it means that Q is idle. And if it is 0, 1, it means first byte of opcode is present inside that. 1, 0, Q is empty, and 1, 1, which is nothing but there is one more byte of opcode present in the, that is subsequent byte in the uh, instruction Q. Okay, so these are what uh, the pins of 8086 microprocessor and uh, we will discuss the remaining things in the later session. Thank you.